Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christopher Rudder, and these are my co-presenters, Charlie Oliver and Owen Wolski. And I'd like to start out by showing you this. Here are two pictures taken not even five miles apart. And I think we can all see which one of these two pictures is likely to have more achievement. But why? What is the first thing someone's eyes <coughs> are drawn to when they see these two classes? Well, clearly it is the class size. The one on the left is very crowded. The one on the right, there are less than 15 students, which is below the recommended value. And now that class is much more likely to do better than that one. Ideally, the one on the left should look a little more like this, because crowded class sizes should be a thing of the past. What we've just seen as a simple observation is in reality much more than that. It's become a trend, and it's become a trend that's become evident across the entire nation. Simply, as class size goes up, student achievement goes down. Schools with smaller class sizes are achieving more than those with larger class sizes. All of you students of Wyoming have witnessed this firsthand, how relatively small classes have led to achievement inside and outside of the classroom. And the importance of this issue cannot be taken lightly, because this is our country's future and thus our future. And our country's youth needs the best education possible. I think you all understand the importance of youth development. As author Louis van Hall puts it, we are what we are taught to be, and if, we're, and if we are what we are taught to be, and we aren't being taught to our potentials, then we aren't going to be our potentials. And that's ultimately what is every school's ultimate goal is, is to teach us to our potentials. And the trend we see is too large, as class size hinders what we all want, which is the best possible education, and thus the best possible future. And as statistics all across the country show that more achievement and smaller class size are directly related. And as the, pro the problem is too large a class size. And as you can see from the study conducted from the Federal Board of Education, <coughs> the class size on the horizontal axis when compared to a random selection of schools across the country finds that at the present, as at the present, a vast majority of public schools have class have class sizes in between 21 and 27 students. The average class size is 24 students. And if we look at the national recommended of 16 students, that's the difference between a large class and a productive one. Other statistics testify to the benefits of actually reducing class size gradually. We'll come back to the issue, issue of graduality, but here we can see the real benefits from class size and class size reduction. And as you can see, for most schools, class size reduction improves grades by about 10%. And in the poorer schools, which generally have larger larger classes, the it's it goes up more. The uh, the benefits go up as you go to poorer schools. And that is over a letter grade distance, which I'm sure all of you would like very much. The schools are compared, class size is the most common point pointed towards, as there is such a direct correlation. Teachers simply can't handle too large of classes, and their number one concern covering all materials is almost always class size. I'm sure you've been a part of classes which are either uh, covering all materials, which are smaller than others, and you've been ahead of other people because the class is so so small. When teachers can't cover the necessary material that gets given as homework, they need to more stress placed on students as a result, which can also hurt achievement. Simply think through the, thinking through this issue, you can see that this trend leads to is direct in the correlation between class size and achievement. To put this into clearer terms, think of the game telephone, where one person says a word and it has to travel down a line. The more people, the harder it is to play the game successfully. Now think of these people playing telephone as a class of students. That 
and that word passed down as a lesson a teacher is trying to give. What it boils down to is the more people, the more distractions, and the less chance for success. It's not rocket science how it works. And in Oregon, the number of one, the number one teacher concern is not being able to cover, cover all the material in large class size. Put these. Yeah, the number one concern is teacher concern is not being able to cover all the material required because of too large classes. Schools and their students across the country simply aren't reaching their full potential, and a smaller class size is the simplest solution. I'd like to now show you how teachers feel about teaching their own students and to show you from this issue to, from the one who knows best. When you get the larger class sizes, you know, kids, it becomes easier, I think, for kids to, to kind of hide in the shadows. So we clearly outlined the problem, which I believe is the most prominent in education today. And I think we're all thinking of the obvious solutions. Put these necessary restrictions in on class sizes. Require schools to have a set number of students per classroom. Require student teacher to ratio, uh, student to teacher ratios to be the recommended value at 16 students per class. It's simple, isn't it? But it's not quite that easy. You see, California thought of this obvious solution and put the necessary laws in to require and force schools to have a set number of students per class size. But it didn't help achievement. Now why is that? You see, what California did was go straight from a baby to an adult. It went straight from large class sizes to small class sizes. But they forgot one key thing, and that is that money is finite. And when it comes down to it, money is the main issue. And in order to <coughs> cut class size, you need to do two things. You need to hire more teachers, and you need to find more classroom availability. And those two things put together are remarkably expensive and have indirect consequences. And in addition to that, the, school, the only schools with, who have that kind of money generally have smaller classes overall to begin with. So where class size reduction is actually needed, money is absent. And more and more, we are seeing people doubting the issue of class size. However, it is not the benefits which are questioned, but rather whether or not the positive results will outweigh physical money and cost. Because if class size is restricted, and an already tight budget will have to cut, will lead to budget cuts in other departments like arts, sports, and extracurriculars, which will hurt the very type of growth we are trying to foster. But even bigger than these issues is the issue of the teachers. Budget cuts will have no choice but to go to teachers, meaning, meaning the better, more quality teachers will be laid off and replaced by a more inexperienced and lesser trained workforce. So that brings us right back to square one, doesn't it? We have the problem of class sizes being too big and making them smaller is indirect consequences, which end up hurting student achievement. The question is, where do we go from this? Because the issue of class size is still very much in the equation. If you look at all the benefits to a smaller class size, they really are astronomical. It's, for one thing, it's harder to get away with slacking in a small class, and it's easier to learn. There's more individual attention, more emphasis on creative and critical thinking. The material is thus less memorization-based, which makes schools more fun and students more willing to learn, and that, of course, leads to more achievement inside and outside the classroom. And school is really all about instilling that sense of achievement into kids and teaching them what they need to know for life and a belief that they can excel. And in a crowded class, a student is going to have a much harder time standing out and will find it easier to see themselves as just another student in just another class, not anyone special. The list of benefits really goes on and on. So we need a better approach to this issue. A new approach, one that sees both sides of the argument. We need a solution to help the students and eliminating the arts, extracurriculars, and good teachers will really cancel out any benefit to class size reductions bring. In fact, it would probably go in the other direction. What California did had one, one end in mind, and it flew there without, 
and probably go. It didn't compensate for all the predictable problems which which arose, and gradual was not in its itinerary. California, as I showed you before, went straight from this to this, and what it needed to include was this. There we go. Because gradual is how this issue is going to be solved, and I'm here to get us on the right track. A gradual movement towards class size reduction through the issue, through the use of positive incentives for schools increased government educational spending specifically for class size reduction where it is most needed and raising more awareness of the issue to <coughs> spark the movement towards universal smaller classes across the entire nation. And there are external solutions which can also help the issue. The best of these comes from students, teachers who often find themselves in small schools. If we require student teachers to go to those schools with crowded classes, this will cut the student teacher ratio in half, boosting one to one attention and providing many of these same benefits of class size reduction without the excessive costs. These are clear steps that we take right now and we are just getting started. So, class size on its own is essentially counterproductive. Just limiting it will cause teacher quality to go down and budget cuts in the areas where, in theory, spending should really be increased. All one has to do is look at California to understand the failure of simply putting in place direct restrictions on class sizes. If the correlation is still there. The statistics all show the problem clear as day. Students simply have better achievement in a smaller class setting. They can't get away with slacking anywhere near as easily. They get more one-on-one -on -one attention, more opportunity to participate, and creative learning is fostered. And the more, and, and the solution is staring us all right in the face. Gradually.